Coming up on today's Code Bear Daily AFL Weekly Show. That's right, it's a combination daily show and the weekly AFL show. We're talking all things round 15 of the AFL. We're talking player props, game picks and best bets. Stats guy, what's your favourite? Saints rising star, Wanganin Miller to go big again. Nice one. Alex? 10 out of 10, rate my multi with some goal kickers. <laughs> nice, we've got rate my multi as well in there. I enjoy that a lot and I think we're going to see an absolute smashing from the Gold Coast. Ooh, Sorry. I don't know about that. Hawks fans. But either way, it is an absolute shockers AFL. AFL Weekly Daily Show. Better check it out. It's really good. Welcome to Code Bear Daily AFL Weekly. There you go. It is time for round 15 of the AFL. I'm your host, James Clements, as always, the editor of Code Bet. Content lead and editor of Code Bet, oh, apparently. Oh, yeah, now. you've got a new name, yeah. A new title. We need Watch that. Out. <laughs> You're in trouble now. I'm joined, as always, by the pontiffs of punting. We've got Alex Donnelly to my extreme right. Yeah, how good's this? MCG in the background. I don't know if Gerald's uh, gotten rid of it, but this oh, is pretty cool. It, yeah. We're going to yeah, go awesome. for a kick later. Yeah. It's going to be awesome good. Awesome setup, yeah. Yeah, I could probably kick it from here. See those mountains? I could kick a footy over there. <laughs> uh, and we've got the stats guy as well. I'm here. I'm happy North aren't playing this week. We can't, we can't lose to the bye. People think we can. I think the odds are pretty even, but yeah, I'm pretty happy that North get a bit of a week off and don't have to watch us lose. So Did you have that joke bad. written on the back of your hand? No. Or like, I was about to say, I just thought it was the opening. Yeah. You, mean, you lo- use on was, Tinder because I can understand why it's not working. No. Nah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to even comment The Tinder profile <laughs> bio of proud North Melbourne fan is not the yeah, I yeah. yeah. think it is. Not, that, <laughs> that's anyway, start, yeah. this is Code Footy's Back Daily. Well, it's Code Bet Daily, but it's also Please the Code Bet Daily AFL Weekly Show. This is a combo show today, so we're going to go through every single game. That was game. Six. It's a short round short because round of the buys, the buys so yeah, yeah. may as well just knock it over. Round 15 of the AFL, we've got player props, game picks, best bets for every single game. Uh, you know, this is what we do. It's codes, it's betting, it's daily. This is the weekly show. It's AFL as well. Nice. So to recap last week's results, Alex ended up tops with five. What's because going he, on there? Uh, <laughs> Buck the trend and picked GWS. Yes, yes. That was the only. That was the one that we we all tipped Gold Coast. <laughs> Even me. Who Even you. Been, I was I, a, you tipped Carlton every other week. I've been <laughs> hanging on for grim life. I guess yeah. you know, with Carlton tips, and then the one week I get off and they smash Gold Coast. Go figure. All I know is stats guy's lead is just slowly dwindling. It is, yeah, but it, is. it was nine at one point. I'm yeah. on seventy four. Alex started giving you guys a chance. Stats guy seventy nine. Uh, and it'd be good if you gave us a chance not to talk over us. But that's all right. Uh, <laughs> you right, can do that every <laughs> single podcast. <laughs> but that's okay. Trying to talk to the boss uh, today. Stats guy just interjecting everyone. Oh, you know I went to Boston, right? Oh, yeah. That's that, yeah, that's what happened. Cool story, Alex. <laughs> all right. Let's get into it. Thursday. <laughs> tonight. Tonight. Uh, we're heading down the M1 to Geelong. eighty seven. the Cats. Melbourne, $2. This is flipped after yesterday. Crazy. Uh, I believe the Cats were two and a half point underdogs. Now they are one and a half point favorites as of today. Cool. With no Clay Clay Oliver. Clary with his, uh, what, what's his secret ban according to Twitter? Uh, so there's the secret <laughs> drugs ban well, or there's drug, the secret yeah, gambling ban. If you ban. get your first two drug bans, it doesn't have to go to the media. So people are saying it's that, but I don't think it's that. People. Never forget. No. Are idiots. Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> so, Especially people on Twitter with their username, um, I am Geelong. <laughs> yeah, Checks exactly right. Uh, so Melbourne are now one and a half point underdogs in this one. So the over-under is 151.5. Mm. It's also, though, in other places, like under 150, like 149. It's crazy. It's meant, to, it's meant to bucket down there at uh, the concrete jungle tonight. Sure. You know, 25,000 people crammed into half a stadium. Yeah. What 50 of them from Melbourne, the rest Geelong. Pretty much, yeah. But this is interesting, one, right? So Geelong, uh, what is this? This is a two top five offenses. You've got Geelong, number one still. Yep. Uh, Melbourne at five, having slipped dramatically, which I'll get to in a second. But yeah. um, pretty weird one because Geelong need to win. It's crazy or that they're 10th. Oh, they're kind of cooked. Hmm. Six and seven at the Absolutely. moment, right? So this is kind of where it's sort of leading to for the Cats. They need to win. Melbourne sitting third, nine and four, five, whatever. Something like that. Uh, checks Knocked out. off Collingwood. They did. Yeah. So they're flying all right, but they haven't kicked a <laughs> score in about six weeks. So interesting setup, right? Geelong haven't covered a line in five of its last six. That's right. They haven't covered the line hmm. in five of its last six. Yeah, makes sense. Not wow. great. They've lost a few of them. Yeah. They've lost four Where, of their last well, they, they they favourites. They were 50 point favourites against GWS and got rolled. So. Lost to Gold Coast in, in Geelong. I'm sorry. That GWS, was round so three. That was six Coast rounds rather. ago. That was yeah. like 12 weeks ago. Yeah. The Cats have also beaten Melbourne in eight of the last 10 down there at GMHBA though. So hopefully hmm. the Demons spending the night down at Torquay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. 
It's like, we just want to play golf in the morning. All right, just say that. <laughs> I mean, fairness, that's what I'm doing down there on Saturday. Nice. Mm. Do you play for Melbourne? Uh, <laughs> no, I could. <laughs> don't know if you could. <laughs> you could. Uh, could I, I'd kick the straight. Other, the other point is six straight between the two at GMHB. I've actually gone over the total points line. That's I think Geelong kicked 200 points one day. <laughs> That's not. That was a long time ago. Six. Surely, I think that was yeah. about eight yeah. or nine. Okay. Yeah. That was two hundred thirty-three to forty-seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was back nothing. in two thousand twelve. Somewhere thirteen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, basically, with it at GMHBA, the last six going over, you'd be like, "Oh, geez, that's a pretty good trend." Then what's a stronger trend? The fact that neither team can kick a score at the moment yeah. is probably where I sit. So, on that. Uh, the way that they're rolling at the moment, I think there's a pretty good case to be made that, yeah, we're going to have to go the under. Just the simple idea that Melbourne, what was it, 66 they managed against Collingwood? That sounds right, wasn't it? Melbourne? Yep. Yeah. I think they had 67 or 66, yeah. was, I'm pretty sure, yeah. 66, 62 they won oh, that game. Hang on. They beat the Blues the week before, 61 points. They managed 72 against the Dockers the week before, 76 the week before that in another loss to Port. Prior to that, they smashed Leo's beloved Hawthorne, 103-49, but still, it's only 103 against the Hawks. Like That was before Hawthorne started to sign. Yes, yeah, they're, they're, as well. they're playing well now. So you might look at that and go, oh, geez, but aren't Geelong the top-ranked offensive team? Well, they had 72 last week against Port. They managed 97 against the Dogs, 74 against GWS, 77 against the Dockers, and 78 against the Tigers. So they haven't kicked over a ton in five weeks. Since they beat Essendon. Um, and yep. it's just a real struggle, I think, for both offenses. I'm going the under in a heartbeat, I think, in this. Even with the really, really low one of 151, I think Raining. it's all right yeah. there. If it's cold and wet, yeah, let's go the under. Uh, player props to this, yeah. Tom Stewart, Isaac Smith, and I believe Max Holmes is my better featured same game multi-pick, yeah. which is 20 plus for each. I mean, it's... So side note for tonight, it's 95% chance of showers there with winds up to 25 kilometres oh. and a top of 10 degrees. Uh, it's a freeze. There's going to be a lot of long sleeves tonight. Yeah, Bailey yeah. Fritch is one I of love them. A good Geelong, I love a good Geelong long sleeve, actually. Bit of wind off Cario Bay. <laughs> Tom Hawkins will be like, this is nothing. <laughs> yeah. He's all greased up. <laughs> yeah, he'll uh, be greased up. But give me, yeah, the Smith, Smith's gone for 20 plus and five of his last six. Stewart's gone over 29 of his last 11. Ooh. And uh, Holmes has had twenty. He had twenty four in his return last week yep. from injury. So he's, uh, he's the twenty really plus good. for each of those feels pretty safe. Tomahawk three plus goals. He has fifty nine in twenty one games against the Demons. Yep, really not bad. Doesn't mind kicking a bag. He's got six in the last three. I think four at once though, and then it might be one and one. But yep. still, not bad. Uh, so you might remember Gary Rowan last week went off chops early. I think it'll be Tomahawk who actually sort of dominates this week. I think one of the two bigs will get off the chain. Uh, but this is the other thing, right? Stephen May, Jakey Lever. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm worried about for Petty's back as well. Petty's a yep. good, good defender. So I sort of worry about like Jezza finding his way back into form, but I think Tomahawk just finds his way to three. And that was at $2.60 with Bet R, mm. which was the best price I could find yesterday. Mm. So that's good. Uh, the other side, though, you've got Clay Clay out for Melbourne. Petrarca's been unreal, though, basically in his absence. And we've sort of hit on that each week pretty much, right? We've yeah. got, oh, you know, he needs to be good without Clayton or Petrarca. And guess yeah. what he's done? He's been good. He's been really good. He's been awesome. Uh, I think four of his last five, he's gone for over 28. And he's averaged 29 in his last seven. So in his last four against the Cats, Petrarca's had 36, 26, 32, and 21. And he's kicked six goals in that time as well. Yeah, nice. Wow. I think three may have come last year in one game. So he's gone. I think he's at least had a goal in each of those four. Yeah. So I think it was one, 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 and then three last year. So. Give me Petrarca, 30-plus disposals and an anytime goal in the same game multi. I love that. Uh, but really, the game pick for me comes down to the simple fact that the Cats are at home. We saw them lose to GWS. We saw them... GWS since then have just gone bang, bang, kicking scores as well. GWS turned yeah, a corner after that game. Toby Green's just carrying them. 27 and 6 at GMHBA, though. So the last five seasons, they won 8 to 12. Crazy uh, 8 to 10, there. obviously, over the Demons. Dan and Geelong, I think they're going to win this one. 1 to 39. Yep. The Demons' defense is all right, but I think this is just a slugfest and I just trust Geelong a little bit more at home. I'm also going with uh, Geelong, but off the bye, uh, with Melbourne being off the bye, sorry. The teams coming off the bye this year are one and five. The one being St Kilda when they beat Sydney. Both teams were off the bye, so one team had to win. So technically speaking, the bye is zero and five. Yep. Geelong 1 to 39 was the pick because I don't think they smashed them. I don't yeah. think it's 233 to 47. It's like 63 to 50 and yep. it's a slog and it's a punish and it's like, oh yeah, Geelong eked it out at home. It's like, am, do I not have anything better to do on a Thursday night than this? No. No, no I do not. So <laughs> There's no not. cricket, no definitely. NRL. 
But stats guy, you're taking on the demons. Yeah, I'm going demons just because I, I really like May and Lever. You mentioned them. Both of the uh, Cameron's been a little bit out of form compared to what he was at the start of the year. Nine goals in uh, five. If it is a slog and it is in the wet contest, I'd like Melbourne's midfield better without Danger. Uh, Geelong's midfield last week, as soon as Danger went out, looked absolutely shocking. He was getting all their clearances. Yep. I don't trust Geelong's midfield at all. I know Holmes is a really good player, but I don't think he's going to do as well uh, against Melbourne, especially if he's matching up on Petrarca and players like that. So I'm just going to take Melbourne. Just yeah, I think if it's if it's a real grind I think Melbourne have the better quality I'll pay it yeah so I'm just going to take them Bailey Fritz was another pick that was in the article you'd obviously go check that out at yeah. codebet.com.au but I just think the Cats have just enough sort of I don't know experience yeah. especially down there on paper you'd say Cats right. especially down there but I don't know I just don't like their form as much alright so that's guy. so I think we're Alex and I are Geelong you yep. are Melbourne interesting Yes. Friday, St. Kilda, Brisbane. This is you, Stats Guy. It is. St. Kilda are $2.12. Brisbane, the favourites at $1.75. The line is really short again at three and a half. The over-under is 168 and a half. I'll just quickly touch on the over-under. A lot of people at the start of the year were saying, Ross the Boss is back. He had a few games, especially against us, where he was just making the game absolutely and low scoring, boring against the Swans. What was that? Sorry, against North Melbourne. I didn't say that. I said I didn't play for them. Yeah, no, it's fine. You, you can say us. I don't care. I should have said We're North all fans Melbourne. Here. Yeah, uh, yeah, against North Melbourne. But since then, uh, the last five games, the Saints matches have gone over, which I was really surprised about. How did that Swans game go over? Yeah, I don't know. I think there was a few low lines. This one's a I've little bit higher. I've got a feeling that Swans Saints game it literally hit the line for the over. Yeah, yes, that's it must right. have been like exactly one fifty five. I think it was right on. Yeah, there's right been a couple, of, but they have hit the over. And Brisbane are uh, in six of the sorry five of the last six weeks have kicked hundred points. They've got a really good forward line, especially under the roof. We've got a yeah some crazy weather over this weekend, but under the roof, I don't mind the over of one hundred sixty eight and a half in this nice. one. Uh, the Saints, crazily, haven't had back-to-back -back wins or losses in their last 10 games. So they're just going win, loss, win, loss. If it's going to go like that, that means they win this one because they yeah. lost last week. That's just um, cool. I, I'm That's not consistency, gonna, mate. Very consistent. I like how you're like, they're not, they're not consistent. They're going win, they're loss, win, loss, win, loss. I like stats guy. That's very consistent. consistent, but like a roller coaster of <laughs> consistent. Uh, and then Brisbane, other than that horrible loss of the Dogs, it was a bit of a scrap that game. They've yeah. won six of their last seven at Marvel Stadium. So everyone likes to talk about their record of the MCG. Very hor is horrible. But uh, Marvel, they're not too bad. So they're they like Marvel. Yeah, they don't mind. They like under the under the roof. Yeah, easy to mark with their big forwards. Both battling for a top top four spot. So this is a massive game. Uh, then I'm just going to have a look at Nazaya Wanganin Miller for uh, the Saints. He's just a rising star. A lot of people aren't talking about him just yet. I've sort of looked at him in a super coach sense, but in a betting sense as well, he's really good. 25 plus, I think he could easily get in this one. Ross has moved into half back. Great link up with Jack Sinclair. Their speed. They've just got uh, license to just run all day. Get the quick hands, get the quick kicks. He's averaged 26 uh, touches across his past six games. So Jeez. I don't mind the 25 plus is $2.15. Really? I think, yeah, I, I think the betting markets haven't sort of caught on just because he's that younger guy, yeah. as we're he's talking about kid. Wardlaw. He's a kid, second season. So $2.15, I think, is really good value, especially the form he's in. Then to follow on from that, he's lifted his uh, AFL fantasy scores since jumping onto halfback. He's uh, averaging 94 AFL fantasy points across Ooh, the last Leo seven matches. Over there. Yeah, Leo will like this one. Bit of AFL fantasy. He's probably going to get him in Supercoach soon, I reckon, as well. Uh, 90 plus AFL fantasy, averaging that 94 across the last couple of months. $1.90, I think, is really good value as well. I think next few weeks, all of those sort of odds for him will drop just because he's in great form and they, the betting markets haven't caught up to that yet. Nice. So, yeah, good rising star for the Saints. And then obviously an absolute gun for the Saints coming back from injuries Max King uh, I think he's going to get at least three goals in this one so three plus I'm going for I didn't write that down but I think it was about $2.50 with Ladbrokes, kicked 13 goals four in his uh, four games since coming back. Literally, if anyone's going to- Charlie gonna, just punched yeah. the wall. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. like my, my thing about Oscar Allen kicking 17-1. Well, he was, Max <laughs> King and the Saints were famous last year for just missing Spray. every single one of their set shots, but he's, 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 he's fixed it up. His last game of the season, he kicked six straight against the Swans. Yeah, so, so since then, he's kicked insanely accurately, uh, which I was very, very surprised about. I was looking at the stats, I thought he'd still have a bit more, few more points than that, but 13-4 in his last four, three plus, I think. Saints just look for him every time attack. If anyone's going to score goals, three plus for $2.50, you got to go. Kingy. Uh, then we'll have a look at Brisbane. Uh, Zach Bailey, I think he's a really underrated player the last few years, just averaging six over a uh, goal per game and 16 touches per game off half forward. He likes to move up into the midfield every now and then, uh, kicking 65% uh, in front of goal, and he's even kicked a goal after the siren. Really last good week was his moments. best game of the year. Yeah, and he's even had a few games over 20, 25, but I think just an easy bet. Uh, Zach Bailey over 15 touches and, and a goal in this game, just yeah. his over his averages, $2.06 with Labrooks. I think it's really good. Uh, and then finally, uh, final player prop, Will Ashcroft. He's just risen. He's averaging 24 across his last uh, five games. 
The Saints, I just looked up before, uh, have the second least clearances in the comp this year. They average the second least. Uh, Essendon's the worst, which surprised me a little bit because they've got really? some really good midfielders. But the Saints- Wouldn't have been uh, able to tell from the uh, Carlton game, I'll tell you that. No, <laughs> definitely not. I think they would up their average Jeez. a little bit, but yeah, the Saints are really bad in the clearances and Ashcroft it can burst out of pack. So I don't mind him to get 25 plus. $2.55 in the form he's in, 24 uh, average across the last five games. I think that's really I good mean, value as hair, well. Hair like that is- and I hair coming out of the flows. pack. Yeah, it looks awesome, doesn't it? And then finally, I'm going to go Brisbane minus three and a half. I think that's a really small line. The line's extremely tall forward line. I think, yeah, Saints don't have enough to cover, enough players to cover all of them. Brisbane have won four of the last five meetings with the Saints. And finally, the Saints have failed to cover the line in their last five matches. They've had Jeez. a few close games uh, and that small line of Brisbane. Wait, I think, it's failed to cover in the last five against Brisbane? because No, they, just in they this cov- season. They covered against the Swans. The line was like two. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Might have been four of the last five. I, was, yeah. I swear. They, the, line, the line was like two and they won by okay. yeah, four. Okay. Yeah, was a bit. Three of the last five, it appears. Ooh, Maybe okay. it's the last five between Brisbane and Singapore. It might be. I, right, anyway, they. I, I think <laughs> Brisbane are the better team. Uh, they got a big tall forward It gives line. more credence to the Brisbane bet, though. Yes. Yeah. Uh, minus three and a half, I think, is a really small line yeah. for a really good team that's going to stay in the top four. So that's what I'm going with. Cool. Brisbane. Uh, yeah, I'm going Brisbane. I think we're all well. going Brisbane. Yeah. I think uh, we'll be close. Having there, watched yeah. both teams up close the last two weeks, Brisbane just have uh, they can just explode. Yeah. And as long as they kick straight, they'll win I really like them under the roof just because they're big forwards. Like yeah, it's like the perfect conditions. It's interesting you're going Bailey and Ashcroft. Just talking here, I think in your breakdown, there's a few other names in there. Charlie Cameron is, I think, 34. Yeah, he's been really I was average. To, I was trying not to talk about. I have had a lot of Brisbane games lately to talk and doesn't about. Doesn't Joe Danaher dominate at Marvel as well? Every time he comes back down. Yeah, I think he averages two and a bit goals. Not down bad. Down there. But yeah, I'm still. I'm Lines. Just wanted so to have a few different he's players. Because Hipwood bobbed up last week after bobbing up against Hawthorne, so True. it's probably Joe and Charlie's turn after Chucky got sort of uh, shut down last. But we're all week. picking Brisbane. Yeah, yeah, nice. which is a big close game though. Mm. All right, Saturday. What yeah. buster? <laughs> Who cares about this game? Hell so yeah! Basically, let's maybe uh, just cover how much Sydney win by <laughs> and how many goals specifically. That's a big hit. line. <laughs> yeah, the Swans are bucko five. The Lions fifty and a half. The wow. Eagles eleven dollars. The over under one hundred sixty eight and a half. So. It's just we're just that Sydney's over under. No, uh, yeah. Well, the fact we only average eighty <laughs> points a game good, yeah, this yeah. year. Yeah, I don't think they're going to get up. You go for North Melbourne. Uh, uh, West Coast <laughs> they can have, kick over eighty. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. That's, that's what I mean. Uh, West Coast have lost their last eleven by forty plus. We just keep adding one to that every week. And I did some digging this morning. West Coast averaged nineteen goals kicked against them this season. It's nineteen goals, twelve to be exact. If it's like the goals wow. and points throughout the year, that's a lot. <laughs> Sydney have covered the line in their last nine as favourite against West Coast. West Coast haven't won at the SCG since before Stats Guy was born. Jeez. 19 1999. No, I was I was one. Ah, oh, damn, I was really close. <laughs> I remember that game like it was yesterday. <laughs> uh, for, and I think they hadn't beaten the Swans ever at the SCG before then either. I'll have to go back in that thing. It's maybe wow. twice West ever. Coast of the SCG since 1999. Yeah. The, to Kelsey be fair, there's a lot. Chris Main wearing. I feel yeah. like a lot of teams have a, sh- have a shocking record. Peter Matera. We have a, sh- well, have, have a shocking record. at teams, The Adelaide teams have a ridiculously good record at the SCG. Wow. But anyway, not important. <laughs> uh, Franklin, Heaney, Mills and Ma- Tommy McCartan are expected to be back for the Swans this weekend. Big ends, yeah. uh, which are great ends. I wouldn't mind Franklin not playing to be honest. But anyway, uh, Duggan, McGovern and Elijah Hewitt are back for West Coast, which really helps there. But the main thing for this is it's a really good game for the Swans depleted and now looking at at comeback backline to get a game under their belts and to fix up their structure for the back half of their season. Given West Coast haven't scored more than 69 points since round six, and that was against Port Adelaide, they're going terribly. Uh, The Swans, as an attack, they're averaging 84 points this season. And watching the game last week, I expected the Swans to lose. And I walked away going... There's something there. Like the Swans showed a bit with no Franklin and no Heaney. Yeah, close, yeah. Um, looks, there was a lot of movement in the forward line. Braden Campbell and Ang- Angus Sheldrick were fantastic. But Joel Amati, he's the one I'm looking at here. He's my starting point. Four plus goals on the weekend at seven bucks fifty with Ladbrokes. Wow. He took six marks against Brisbane. He only kicked the one goal. But the thing is, he looked really dangerous. Like he was an aerial threat at all times. Whereas it's been like the Swans. Some of the tall dudes jump about three centimeters off the ground. It's not <laughs> ideal. Amadi, he can spring, so it's really good. Uh, if he gets the matchup on McC- McGovern, he's going to be too fast and agile for him, and McGovern will probably tear another hamstring. Uh, so seven bucks fifty for the four plus. He did kick four against uh, Hawthorne earlier in the season, and probably would have kicked six or seven against Richmond, but ripped his hamstring off about fifteen minutes into the game. Hmm. Moving on to Lukey Parker, twenty five plus at a buck sixty seven. He was great back from suspension last week. I think we underestimated how important he was to the Swans against St Kilda. He had 24 possessions, 11 tackles, and 10 clearances against the Lions, as well as a goal. Take the two bucks for him to sneak forward any time. It's like, it's like the Petrarca one. It's like, oh, yeah, Luke Parker's 40 metres out with a mark. Okay, yep, that makes sense. Pretty reliable. Uh, yeah. And one who I'm liking, I think the betting market hasn't caught up to him, Angus Sheldrick. 
55% game time and uh, that was against Brisbane with 19 possessions and two goals and sort of the mold of a Luke Parker. He was in and under, he was everywhere. He's a great kick. 20 plus possessions is two bucks 50 with bet R, but if he can get, you know, 70% of game time, eight bucks 50 for that 25 plus, I am all over that. Well, why did he get 55%? That seems I low. don't know. Just, just probably to do rotation, with the rotation. Yeah. It was his first time in a midfield yeah, up okay. against a mid, you know, really Neil, low, yeah. Ashcroft and co. Um, okay. And Jim's favorite mate, the left footer, Errol. Whoa. <laughs> hey, Errol. We didn't even plan that. Uh, 27 and two last week. Hey, putting him on the wing worked. Not the forward pocket, Longmire. Great idea. Uh, 30 plus, <laughs> three bucks 60 with bet 365, not 465 as I got written down. Uh, and two plus goals. <laughs> he kicked you. a couple last week, $2.85. And of course, we can't mention him. Can we get some t-shirts, please, Gerald? Oscar, Oscar Allen. Allen. Oh, four plus goals. Big Oscar. <laughs> I'm not doing the two plus. I'm going the four plus. The smaller That's S. not the t-shirt. I know. You can't just bet that. Oscar yeah, Allen two plus, plus is like $1.39. Yeah, so, yeah, too easy. Uh, look, Chunk kicks out of the clearance. You know, they just get it and throw it on the boot. Taking grabs 40 meters out against that sort of smaller Swans defense. Rampy still working back into it. McCartan, if he plays first game back, he's taller and stronger than both of them. Four plus, four dollars ten. But overall, the Swans will just, they should, if they play up to what they did last week, they will gallop away with this. Minus 64 and a half is $2.50 oh, at an alternate line. I thought the line was already close to av Their average lo losing margin is 138 points over like the last couple of months. So That's crazy. it's not great. That's, uh, that's not great. But the no. one I like <laughs> is Swans minus 52 and a half. And over 168 and a half total match points at three bucks fifteen. So the Swans winning, you know, like 130 to 40. Sweet, we cover. Sure. Yeah, three bucks fifteen. Mm. I don't know if it's going to be that one sided, but I do yeah. think I do think it's they could cover worry. that. Yeah, 40 plus, but I'm not sure about the 50. But yeah, if they West Coast can give up at, at, towards the end of games at some point. But that's, so yeah, and that's the thing. We'll it's see. like if the the Swans have shown when they get a roll, they get a real good roll on. They just haven't done yeah. it like much this year. They were really good against Brisbane. If they bring that sort of contest and effort, they will win and win easily because despite what their their ladder record shows, they've actually played much better. There's been a few this terrible This has been games. a really long time yeah. to talk about West Coast. I mean, Coast. <laughs> you, talk, you talked about Carlton and Gold Coast for 15 minutes, so give yeah, me my time. I was completely proven wrong yeah. because <laughs> Carlton actually Well, I do hope West Coast then do win this game. That'd be funny. Why it do you? Be, that'll, that'll, it would be hilarious. Know, just be funny. You're already angry. So no, that'd be, be great yeah. if West Coast won for <laughs> Stats Guy because then he could just lose the rest of the season. West Coast, yeah. nah, West, West, West Coast percentage is just too bad. They're like 15 behind. Not if they just snag an extra win. <laughs> yeah. <Carlton> nah, <laughs> we play them later in the year. Hopefully, hopefully Sydney Austin. win. Sydney, Sydney win. We all go on Sydney. Sure. Marty Party. Fremantle versus Essendon. This was our man Marcus hardest, covering this one. This is hardest a tough game. game. This Very game hard. sucks to pick. Uh, <laughs> I'll reflect that. Dollar seventy eight for Frio. Draper's not playing. I think. Who Draper? No, it doesn't look like teams only fifteen. Uh, for Essendon, and five and a half is the line. The over under 157 and a half, which is a weird one because you're out of Frio. It's like, all right, sure. I just don't know uh, how that sort of rolls. I think, though, it's Frio at night, which is like the clincher. Yeah. Mark has highlighted the fact that 23 or 28 at night have gone under. Under, Frio. okay. So That's a weird stat. No, it is a it. weird one. I don't mind it. Uh, the home side, though, has won 10 of the last 12 between these two, but the away side has covered the line. Okay. In the last six. That is chaos. So I've lost my, a few of them. Yeah. My pick for this is actually probably going to be Essendon in the line. Um, yep. But the way it rolls, Hayden Young gone for 20 plus in eight straight. He's crushing it. That feels like like not a giant amount of value, but it's a great multi edition. Yeah, it was a Hayden multi, Young yeah. 20 plus. Yep. Uh, Caleb Strong 25 plus. He's done that 16 in the last 17. And he had 24 when he didn't have 25. Again, another great little multi one because it's only $1.25. Wow. Uh, Nick Martin. 20 plus, he's gone for 26, 31, 21, and 13. His last four was everywhere against Carlton as well. So there's a couple of little multi ones there. But overall, it sort of feels like you've got what? Sarong, Brayshaw, they sort of disposal they were bets. So bad last week. Yeah. But this is also against an Essendon team that's like, ah, we'll just get the ball back. We're just like, well, you guys go kick a goal. We'll bounce it again, then we'll get the ball and we'll kick a goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah not the most right? offensive thing. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, true. My thing is, I know it's probably going to be low scoring, but two meter Peter against Alex Pierce. He could have just a massive throw game. him, you know, so over up to stadium. Five straight against Carlton. He's five bucks so. eighty. He's such a good to, kick, he's five yeah. bucks eighty to kick four plus. Love it. Wow. Absolutely. Yep. I'll be on that. Love that. Yep. Uh but the pick I've just ended up and just, you know, going through Marcus's stuff. Essendon one to thirty nine, two dollars sixty six. I feel like this will be close. I don't actually mind Essendon at the line as well because even if Frio sort of scooch by them, 
it does feel like it could be like a four-point game, like 66-62 yeah. or something over in Frio on a Saturday night where you're just like, oof, I didn't enjoy that, but here we are. <laughs> I was about to say, who's playing fullback for Essendon? Because Jaya so missed that. He's so actually Thatcher, been pretty good, actually. Because, yeah, oh. um, what's he for Taylor from GWS just was like, Right, son, you think you're the rising star? I'm going to show you. Jeezy really put Amos to sleep. Yes. So this is it. Essendon four on the trot. Richmond, West Coast, North, Carlton, off the bye. Uh, is that form any good? I mean, the Richmond one is, but the rest of Richmond and Melbourne. They, they look fantastic against Carlton. So I don't know. That was Carlton. So it's a bit of a tricky one. Yeah. I just think the Freo have looked pretty rubbish the last couple of weeks. Three and three at home this season as well for Freo. I'm going to go to the Bombers. Stats guy. That's I'm stats going Freo. Guy. Just like you said, a lot of their uh, midfielders are very good, but they're very good one way. Whereas Freo have a lot of uh, Sarong and Brace are really good tacklers. I think they can lock them down a little bit. I'm really not confident at one Freo though. This could be really close when my tip in the draw at fifty one dollars. I just nice. checked, uh, but I don't think I'm going to tip the draw. I'll go Freo just at home. I don't think Essendon are that good just yet. But five dollars eighty for Peter Wright to kick four plus. Yeah, that's, I love that. Yeah, yeah he Absolutely could he could tear that. his game apart. I might be having a big goal kick and multi for the Joy week. missed three dollars for three. Don't mind that as well, because yeah. I think yeah we need we need a couple he's, of extra yeah, he's goal been awesome, yeah. And Jai as uh, Jai Menzi for yes. the Bombers yep. anytime is like one of the great Archie, Archie Perkins is one of them too. Uh, so yeah, there's a plenty plenty of options in this plenty game. To bet on yeah. So go check out the write up at yeah. codebet.com.au. Alex, what's your pick? I'm going to lean to the Bombers. Just Freo was so bad last oh, yeah, week. They were, it's yeah. just uh, it's hard to tip a team off that. But Sean Darcy back. I forgot these rocks could just. Oh yeah, I got I got no idea. <laughs> <It's> gonna, <laughs> yeah. That's why I want to dip the draw. <laughs> it's so hard. So no, if there's no Sam Draper, they have Phillips. Yeah, and, 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 and two meter Peter will just take some rocks in yeah. the uh, forward line. You'd think. Yeah, interesting. Ugh. All right, Sunday Collingwood yeah. versus Adelaide. This is Massive absolute game, yeah. rip schnorter. Yeah, this is great. The pies are buck thirty five minus eighteen and a half. Adelaide three dollars thirty five plus twenty and a half for them. That's the, a big line, isn't it, for a team that can kick a score? What you will see very <laughs> soon, or you will see. That's the very first time soon. I've looked at that line. Yeah. I'm just. I was very clearly shocked. I've just finished up the uh, right up. Uh, the over unders are 166 and a half. Collingwood have covered the line in nine of its last 10 at the G. Obviously didn't cover against Melbourne last time. Funny stat, Adelaide have lost the first quarter in the last 10 games they've played at the MCG. Hmm. Adelaide have not beaten Collingwood in Melbourne since 2015, which then goes into the Pies have actually won seven straight, not six straight seven. against the Crows. Adelaide have lost their last six at the MCG. Ooh. Uh, for some other ones, eight of Collingwood's last nine matches in June at the MCG have gone under the total match points line. <laughs> I love that stuff. Uh, it's like in the it's NRL. Cold. In, it's cold. In the, no, but in it, cold, it, rainy. In the NRL, the Premiers have won the last 21 games in April. Yep. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> wild. Right. So the yeah, under 166 and a half $1.90, I want to take that. Uh, we've talked about Adelaide. They smashed West Coast, put up 170. They're six and two at home with the losses to Collingwood and I can't remember the other one, uh, Richmond maybe? Uh, Sounds right. And they're yeah. one and four away from home. Their, their at-home average score this year is 108.7. They only average 75 wow. away from home. The MCG record absolutely stinks. They've lost their last six by an average of 43 and a half points. Their closest losing margin is 27 points. That's why that line is... Their highest yeah. score at the MCG in that time is 63, Oof. and their lowest is 32. Jeez, so that's that, horrible. Adelaide, under 72 and a half total match points at $1.90. Uh, for players at Adelaide that are going to have to do something, it's Dawson and Laird. It's just simple. They've had 176 yeah. score involvements this year, 120 in, inside 50s, and they both averaged bang on that 28 possession mark. Laird 30 plus, $1.73. Dawson 25 plus is $1.26. But I'm really not super confident on Adelaide, especially they're off the buy. I know Collingwood are as well, but they had the flu run through them and everything uh, before the King's birthday game, adding it to the MCG. Yep. And you look, Collingwood, average winning margin this season at the MCG. They've won seven games. It's 34 points. Jeez. Wow. Tom Mitchell, 30 plus, two bucks. He had 27 on King's birthday. He'll have more midfield time with no Jordan Dugowie. And Josh Dacos sneaking forward. Anytime goal, he's got nine goals this season. Two bucks, 10. Um, I'm going Collingwood at the line. It's $1.95 with Top Sport. And the Collingwood, with, this is with Ladbrokes, this other bet. Collingwood minus 20 and a half and under 165.5 at $4 is my tip. Just because over that place over our shoulders right now, we can't trust Col uh, Adelaide at because they haven't done it since, what, 2015. 
So you're wow. telling me that Tex isn't going to kick 10? I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you that Tex will not get 10 kicks. No. You'll want to play Ooh. West Coast again, but he's definitely not kicking 10. That's the craziest aspect of this, isn't it? Between Fogarty, what, Keys streaming forward, Tex up there. The weird thing. Thrillthorpe. Yeah. Oh, you know? Thrillthorpe, how good. The weird thing is, what are those guys? They seem to only dominate at Adelaide Oval, yeah. Like, yeah. especially their forwards. I, everyone's talking about their forwards, but they haven't really dominated that much away this year. That's. So, yeah. I mean, I picked Collingwood anyway. Yeah, so. I've been Collingwood. Yeah, be worried about the line, down, but I'll probably like, take te- it. Texas got thirty nine goals in twenty five games at the MCG. He only averages one point five a game. His career average is two point three. Isaac Rankin's only played two games. He's got one goal. Oof. Fogarty's got played three games, has four goals. I think Rochelle's played there once. once so and only got one. Yeah. I think, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I saw Tex do his knee, I think, at the G. Oh, uh, playing against Carlton many years ago. Uh, that's not fun. But yeah, not great. So, yeah, good to go, Collingwood. So, I think that's all Collingwood. Yeah, yeah that's the G. Got to go, Collingwood. All right, last game. All six done after Gold Coast Hawthorne. This, I back. think this will be a good game. When people say, oh, this is hey, the only way down the round. But will I, it? I think it'll be a good game. Will it? <laughs> Hawthorne have been pretty exciting lately. All right, Gold. Yeah. yeah. Man, I I <laughs> watched I watched that first half of Gold Coast Carlton on the weekend and halfway through the first quarter I was like, Oh yeah, this would be all right and then Yeah, it looked like Gold Coast were going all right. Gold Coast were training cans I was like, Yeah, okay, cool. Don't yeah. need to watch the rest. Uh, Carlton just sort of finally yeah, turned it on. Oh, yeah. Switch. Yeah, yeah, Carlton, enjoyed it. It, it was great. All right, Gold I, Coast. I'll tell you what, I enjoyed the tins I was drinking while not watching. Well, that yeah, you were watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Reckling. How good. The Mega Hurts. Yes. Get them in the AFL ring. Mega Hurts. <laughs> All right, Gold Coast at $1.28. The Hawks are Hawthorne are $3.85. The, oh, that line is definitely wrong. The 30 and a half. I'll I'll get it up, stats guy. Sorry, I, I think I changed that. Anyway, we've got, yeah. Uh, Gold Coast are favourites. The over under is a hundred twenty three and a half is the line. Okay, yeah. that makes a lot more sense. Over under is one hundred sixty seven and a half. Seems about right as well. Uh, Gold Coast they're pretty solid at home. I know they looked absolutely horrible against the Blues like last week. Blues looked back to their best. Uh, but yeah, Gold Coast at home are a different team. They've beaten Bulldogs and Adelaide in their last two home. Should games. have beaten Melbourne. Should have beaten Melbourne. They had a really good game against them. They love the greasy conditions that they show, as they've shown in Darwin. Just re- who doesn't love greasy <laughs> greasy conditions? Uh, My God, <laughs> you're so greasy. I was waiting for a. For a uh, Simpsons reference there. Uh, but yeah, Rowell and Anderson, they love the contested ball there too. Uh, especially Rao, I think he's in the top three of most contested possessions this year. So they don't mind the conditions up there. Then you got the Hawks. Mitch Lewis is back in the side. I was talking to Leo, uh, social media guy that loves the Hawks, big Hawks fan, saying they've just they've been pretty good the last four weeks, scoring over 88 points the last four weeks. That's why I don't mind the over in this one. I think uh, the Gold Coast forward line can kick it, love kicking goals at home, like Mabi Ochoa, Levi can take a few big grabs. And then the Hawks have been pretty good the last four weeks. Uh, talking about Matt Rao, He's become a great leader since uh, Captain uh, Tuke Miller has been injured. Everyone thought uh, Rao's first the grass, season. Man. The grass, He's been eating the grass. I think it's working for him. Uh, yeah, I think he can get uh, at least 20. cow power. Yeah. <laughs> he's in the top few in the league for contested possessions per game with 14. So he's already getting that 14 of his 22 touches, which is a bit strange. Almost all of them are uh, contested. He's also had 20 plus uh, disposals and a goal in three of his last five matches. Jeez. Especially yeah. at home. I was surprised he's become a bit more attacking. So I don't mind Rao 20 plus disposals and a goal is $3.20. And even if you just want to do him just for a goal, $2.40, I think it is. Uh, he's become a bit more attacking. Those sort of bursting goals where he comes out of the midfield and kick from 50 because he's a big kick as well. So I don't mind that. And then a bit of a niche one, David Swallow, anytime goal. He's uh, been kicking goals this he has, year. He had a couple of games where he's kicked three. I think he's got eight or nine. I think I'm eight, but I'm pretty sure it's nine goals for the year, which has surprised me a little bit. He's always been a midfielder, but Stewie Jew, since he's uh, David Swallow's gotten older, has said, all right, you sit in the forward pocket. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that you're not fast yeah, you're enough not fa- to get in the forward pocket. We'd, we'd rather Rowan Anderson. We'd rather Rowan Anderson in there. He's like, can I get back in? No, our <laughs> midfield young guns, it's going too well. So he's, they've been sitting in forward pocket and he can actually take a big mark for a, a smaller guy. So I don't mind him. Uh, just any time goal is $2.10, which is pretty value there rather than your dollar thirty forty for a lot of other players. Uh, as I mentioned before, if anyone's going to kick goals for uh, the Hawks, it's Mitch Lewis. He's will amazing. anybody though? That's the question. I think I think they will. The Suns looked pretty average last week. I think it will still be pretty close. Uh, it, Lewis That's is because the Brownlow medalist decided to play football. True, true. Uh, yeah, I know a few other carbon players as well. Uh, <laughs> great hands, uh, but Mitch Lewis has, and he's extremely athletic. He's got 16 goals in his last four matches. He's been unbelievable. Two dollars and five cents for three plus. I think uh, Kaziski, although he's not kicking as many goals, sort of provides a bit more space uh, for Lewis to get a few marks. So don't mind that. And then two dollars and five for three goals. Yeah, he, well, he's got 16 in his last four. He's averaging. Doesn't four. mind it. He, he also got goals. Yeah, four plus against. Uh, 
Port Adelaide and Brisbane, who are, I think are much better defenders than, sure. than Gold Coast, so I don't mind that one. Then just a bit of a cheaper one for your multis. Uh, Josh Weddle, uh, underrated so far in his short season, short first season, uh, averaging 23 disposals across his last four games. A uh, couple of games of those were without Sicily. Uh, he's just been dominating, can take intercept marks. He plays that exact role that Sicily plays, where he gets a lot of the ball, he takes some kickouts and things like that. So 20 plus, I think, is an absolute lock, especially with Sicily out with with suspension. So dollar sixty five for that for a multi, I think, is really good as well. I hope so as well, for the sake of my super coach team. Yes, yeah, he's been, he's been going well in super coach. Actually, yeah, get him in your team if he's still. He's cheap. just sort of sitting there, just going. <laughs> Jimmy, do you want to trade me out? I'm like, I don't know. He, he I just gets to you're, know. You're 70, do you're 70 to 90 every week. He's, he's pretty solid, yeah. And then I'll finally finish off. Gold Coast, uh, 1 to 39. I think this will be reasonably close. Hawks haven't won on the Gold Coast since 2014, and that was when the Suns were still like building into an actual team. So, uh, and I think, yeah, the Suns tools, they have a pretty tall forward line without Sicily for the Hawks. I think they can dominate. $2 for that Gold Coast, 1 to 39. I think it's in, uh, one of my best bets of the weekend. Really? Ooh. I think it might even be more with uh, apologies to Hawthorne. They're, like one in six away? Away. They're not, yeah, they're yeah. not, not great away. As well, uh, Leo was also saying, if it was in Tassie or the G or yeah, one of those sort of grounds, you could almost back Hawks, but yeah, can't back them away. I just feel like at home, Gold Coast, like this is a weird one. Like we saw a good Gold Coast team, what, a couple of weeks in a row, yeah. Northern Territory. And they go back to Gold Coast now after a uh, weird, horrible outing at the MCG against Carlton, I think. Yeah, I don't know if I trust. trust it might it, be a bit of a smashing. But you could be, yeah. Uh, but I'm taking Gold Coast as well. Stats guy? Yeah, Gold Coast. Yep. Yeah. Alex? Gold Coast. There you go. All right, best bets for the weekend. Ooh. Weekend, weekend, weekend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good special effects. <laughs> how are we feeling about this? Caleb Sarong, I mentioned this before. Essendon, you know what they love giving up? Plenty Goals. of disposals to the other team. Sarong, he's gone over, you know, he's, we mentioned him before, like absolute cracking, or 25 is just basically a lock at this point. 30 plus is only $1.87. He's gone over 35 three times already this season. Ooh. And he's done it against like weird sort of differing op opposition as well, right? The Dogs, I think uh, there might have been a Gold Coast game in there too. Sarong for 35 plus is $3.50. I wow. love that against this Essendon team that there's just – not a giant amount of defensive midfield pressure no, 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 from no. the Bombers. And I think Sarong and Brayshaw have a field day. Wouldn't be surprised if both go over 30. So if you find one of the featured same game multis with them both going over 30 and maybe a Brayshaw goal, I'd be all over that. Okay. Uh, but I love Sarong just as a standalone at 35 plus. I think he has a massive one. Uh, but as mentioned for tonight's game, the Stuart Holmes Smith uh, better same game multi. This is like the Butters. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Butters, Wines, and Rosie, Rosie yeah. multi that I just love. Because it just it feels didn't like last week though. It that missed it. it just while, missed yeah. last week yeah, as well. That was, well. was Rosie, I think, it yeah, let us down, right? Yeah. Or something. So but the Stuart Holmes Smith 20 plus feels pretty good. Uh Smith is always a bit dicey with like getting over that 20 mark, but I think he's averaging 21 this season. And without danger, you've seen over the last like four or five weeks, he's just kind of always there on a forward wing. Yeah, he pushes up out a of the bit middle more to the midfield. So like, hang on a second, where'd you come from? Yeah. He's like, I'm Isaac Smith. Remember me? Like, I'll pay <laughs> you that. Smith. And Holmes is really good last week. So I think Tom Stewart absolutely smashes it. You could go his standalone. I think we had that 25 plus. Um, you could easily probably push that around the over under like 27 and a half if you're looking at bet 365 or something. But that same game multi, $2.40 is one of my best bets this week. Easy. Awesome. Stats guy. Yeah, Wanganee Miller, as I mentioned before, I think he's my best bet of the weekend. I think the markets haven't really caught on to how good he is. He's over two dollars on most sites for twenty five plus, so nice. I'm just going to go him. Yep. And then, as I just said, literally just before Gold Coast one to thirty nine, I think it will be greasy conditions. I don't think they can win by forty plus. Really? That's I really think that it's going to be close because Hawks have been Hawks good have been last, good. Good last four weeks. They're sort of I like can't north. Trust them away. Sort of like north at the moment. They're off the built, buy, right? Built with the young players, and they're keeping a lot of games off close, the so. buy as well. They could be slow off the mark. Oh, well, anyway, that's that's my best bet. Yeah. All right, Alex. Uh, talking about Angus Sheldrick earlier, that 20 plus at $2.50, even the 25 plus at eight fifty. But I love the goal kicking ones. Amadi four, Oscar Allen four, Peter Wright four. That's wow. The, the multi for those three <laughs> to all kick four plus is $157. I can't Ray have wide break. My multi. <laughs> I'll give that 10. Yes. <laughs> yes. Power forwards. Nah, uh, let's, uh, I reckon Amadi four, Oscar Allen four, I don't Peter know if Wright about four. the Oscar Allen four just – I don't know if he's going to get enough Mate, looks. it's the swans. <laughs> yeah. It's fascinating. And I love the right. I just don't know, like, a Marty against West Coast, pretty easy, I reckon. I think yeah. a Marty I, honest, I don't mind right. this. I'm talking <laughs> myself into it. 157. Let's yeah, go. I'll so, still give it a seven or something. Also, a same gamer in the swans game with the Sheldrick to get 25 plus, swans 40 plus, and Allen and a Marty to kick for $161. Eight. Done. I can't Eight lose. Can't nine. Lose. <laughs> I'm at six. <laughs> 11. I, I'm just, I 11. Somehow I've got to rate my multi in there accidentally, but we'll take it. <laughs> That's fantastic. 
Those are awesome. Yeah, I'd be all over that Sydney West Coast game in terms of disposals and well, specifically as you've said, goals, goals. Yeah, I mean, random meant, to be, to get meant goals. to be clear day in Sydney as well. Like I looked that up as well, and so it's not. It shouldn't be like not a like disgusting slog. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What time does that game start though? Four thirty. Ooh, that's a weird one. Yeah, I'm gonna be on. Yeah. Anyway, get back uh, to the golf. There you go. <laughs> Plenty there. That's round, what is it, 15 of 15. Hey, we're geez, flying. We're coming to the end of the season. I know, very, it's weird. Very, very yeah, there's quickly. only two games on Saturday. Sydney, West Coast, 4.30, and Fremantle, Essen, and 7.30. Sure. Yeah, nice. Mm. All right, well, there you go. That's it. Code Bet Daily Weekly AFL done for this week. Nice. And the Code Bet Daily Show done for today. We'll be back on deck. It'll be you guys tomorrow. Uh, I will. I'll be on deck in a couple of hours for the NRL show where Phil yes. and I will yell about what happened last night as well as looking forward to <laughs> some angry of the crappy games fans. this weekend. Not angry Blues fans, disappointed, <laughs> disgusted. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Stats guys heard that plenty of times. I have, yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Get around the show. Get around all the shows. NRL, AFL, The Daily Show, all the good stuff. Uh, NBA Australia with the NBA draft coming up too. Hashtag free plug. Uh, <laughs> Also, subscribe on your podcast app, like, review, and star it. Uh, we'll be doing plenty of fun videos out of the new studio that you oh, can yeah. see as well awesome, at the moment. Yeah. Uh, once we actually have it, you can't see it, but there's an upside down desk next to it because somebody forgot the uh, screws. <laughs> and the, the screwdriver. Good job, everybody. <laughs> uh, but either way, you'll see plenty more on the socials, YouTube, Facey, IG, Twitter, TikTok, and Twitch. We keep promising the 24-hour <laughs> AFL 23 marathon. Gonna We're going to lock the boys the in a room at some stage. We're going to yeah. lock them in this room. Like, it's just going to be. Because there actually, there there actually is a lock on it. Oh, you're done. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm jumping out that way. <laughs> anyway, send any questions, any comments uh, via the socials. And off you go. Thank you, Stats Guy. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Cheers. And as always, thanks to Gerald Dino for producing and our you know, social guy, Leo, over there. He's uh, going to cop a battering, I think, this week. It's Gold <laughs> Coast. But either way, thanks to me. Uh, cause I can see have- Leo having a good time at shooters, though. I mean, I'm not surprised. Well, on the gold card. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Send him up there. <laughs> just guys, I'm just re- reporting from the front lines. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, what do Why we say? Why Lewis here? <laughs> yeah. What do we say, Sats guy? Gamble responsibly. All right, Mayo picks come in. Happy punting. Footy's back. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.